Hey guys, so I recently launched a small series on how to use Postgres with Golang. And a lot of you commented saying that, hey, uh, GORM is good, but we also want to know other ways of how to connect Golang with uh, Postgres and how to work with them together and better in different ways. So in this series, this is again a very small series that I'm creating here. In this series, we're going to be looking at PQ, the PQ library slash PQ package and database slash SQL package. So these are the packages that we'll be looking at to connect your uh, Postgres with Golang. So um, a lot of you also mentioned uh, that you also want to see the, the Postgres part that happens, right? So I don't use Postgres admin or any UI tool as such. I use the bare bones uh, CLI. So let me show it to you. Let me, let's create a database quickly. So what I do is I shift over to my uh, user, which is Akhil. So I'm already at Akhil, so I'm just, just making sure you guys also do it so that if you, have, if you guys have installed Postgres as a different user, uh, make sure you shift to that user before you uh, try this command, psql. So psql command basically uh, starts off your uh, command line, okay, for your Postgres. Now it's possible that psql doesn't work for you. In that case, you want to, what you want to do is you want to say sudo service start postgresql start. Sorry, uh, there's no start here. So sudo service postgresql start. And if you enter this, uh, not inside the PSQL, because PSQL is working in my case, right? So if it, if it gives you an error for this PSQL command, then you run this command and PSQL will work for you. This is provided that you already have Postgres installed on your machine, right? If you don't have it installed, then it's not going to work. So firstly, ensure uh, that you install Postgres. Now there's a great article uh, with DigitalOcean. I'll try to uh, put the link because what happens is when I shoot these videos, there's a gap uh, to when I upload them. So when I'm, when I'm uploading, I forget putting that link uh, in the description because it takes a while to edit these videos, right? So this is why I say sometimes in the videos that I'll put a link there, but I sometimes forget to put it there. So in case it's not there, I'm just letting you know, just type on Google DigitalOcean and uh, using Postgres or something like that and with Ubuntu. So in, in my case, it's Ubuntu. So I'll show you how to install uh, Postgres on Ubuntu. Okay, so here uh, we'll create a database quickly called Stops DB. Okay, so we'll be creating a very small CRUD here uh, in this case. In the, in the previous uh, example project, we didn't do the update API. Here we'll do the update API also. So uh, for create database, uh, we'll, we'll be creating the database this is called stocks DB because we'll be doing a CRUD for stocks. Okay, so here your database has been created. Now I want to create table. So I already have the command written here. So I'll just copy and paste. And you guys can uh, pause the video in case you want to paste it. But uh, before you do anything, ensure that you are in fact in the stocks DB. Okay. So uh, with this slash C stocks DB, you then, you know, are sent to stocks DB. Or, um, and here is where you want to create a new table. So in, inside a database is, is a table. So to create a table, um, let me copy and paste my script here. So I'm creating uh, a table called stocks and here we have stocks id stock id which is a serial a primary key and you have name price and company only these details that's it so it creates a table for you and this is all that you have to do this is all that you have to do in the postgres uh, everything else will be taken care of by our program okay so you just had to create this data table like this and um, your database in your table so now let's let me show you how to write the uh, environment config file now I have already built the project before we guys start. So there you can see all these files here, but don't worry, we'll be starting from scratch. We'll build a project from scratch, like from the new folder here. I just want to show you the environment file, .env file. It's going to have this variable called Postgres URL. Okay, if you want, you can take a screenshot and is equal to, you'll have Postgres, okay? And just like with MongoDB, you have here you have Postgres. And Akhil is the name of my user. I've showed it to you how I shifted to that user, right? And uh, this is the password. This is my host, local host 5432. Uh, this is my port on which, uh, in my case, Postgres is running. And uh, here it was new DB, right? Now we'll create it into stocks DB because we just created this database together called stocks DB. And uh, this is it, guys. You don't have to create a really big uh, environment file. This is it. You just have to send the URL and you're sorted. And uh, post Golang will be able to connect with Postgres, not an issue. Now that we have the work with Postgres out of the way, we have our Postgres URL out of the way. Take a screenshot if, in case you want to. 
now we'll start with the project right so um, let's get started now I know that I've mentioned this already but I just want to clarify again that if you're looking to work with Postgres and Golang using GORM there's a separate series altogether that I've created already on my channel you can go to my playlist and look for the series for Golang with Postgres and GORM okay um, that's a different way of working with Postgres and this series is a completely different way of working with Postgres now uh, here we'll be using database slash SQL package and we'll be using the library slash PQ package to be working with Postgres and uh, what we'll do now is we'll get started with the code. So here I'll create a new directory called go postgres yd, yd is for YouTube. So I'll go to this directory postgres yd and I'll say go mod init and the name of the package itself will be uh, go postgres yd. So now when I open up using my VS code I'll see that uh, when I say go mod init, it basically creates this go.mod file and it gives the name of the module. So go, Golang is really modular and everything is a module in Golang. And this is why you see the name of the module here and it also shows you the uh, version of Go. And whenever I import any external packages, as you'll see here, because we'll have to use, um, we'll have to work with something, right, in order to create our routes. And we'll be using Gorilla Mux here, which is one of the simplest, um, Frameworks. I won't even call it a framework. It's a very small library, but I think it's called a framework, whatever. So we'll be using Gorilla Mux here, and <clears throat> all the external packages that we'll use, we'll start seeing the list out here in Go.mod. So that's why when somebody comes from a JavaScript background, I give them give them an example that Go.mod is very similar to your uh, package or JSON file, and then a Go.sum file will also be created when we start importing all those external packages, and they'll have the list of the dependencies of the dependencies that we'll import and that's basically very similar to the package log.json file in uh, React. So this uh, wasn't the case with Golang earlier, uh, but very recently, like about four, three, four years back, they've, uh, they've started this, uh, you know, having module and packaging and all of that, and that's just made Golang very simple to use everywhere. Uh, all right. <clears throat> then we'll have our main.go file, and we'll use a nice little project structure. So we don't require a lot of files, a lot of uh, folders, but we'll keep things to a minimum uh, but still we'll have a middleware folder we'll have a models folder now the projects that i make where uh, which are completely for beginners i don't have any file except for the main.go file and i don't even have sometimes the go mod in it i just uh, you know don't even import external libraries and that makes it very easy for somebody who's a beginner to get, get started because people get a uh, little confused uh, with this uh, the folder structure that you have to uh, follow in Golang. In the sense, you don't have to follow it, but what I'm referring to here is the that the name of the folder will be the name of the package. So every folder is a different module or a package, and then you can import those in not Go. Let me show you, and you'll understand. So uh, then I'll have my router package, a folder. So all the files, like in this case, there's only one file, but let's say there were multiple files inside the router.go package or the folder. Uh, we would all we would have to always start them like this package router so all the files that would belong in this folder will all belong to the same package package router and that's what will make it very easy for us to import all of these folders or packages inside main.go and this is how you can create segregation in the code so all all the files related to routing will be in the router folder and you they will all belong to the package router and you'll be e easily able to import them here so if it like node.js you don't have to do uh, export uh, exporting the uh, you know uh, like let's say for with react you have to export the component or whatever with uh, with node.js you also have to export the functions here you don't have to do anything you just have to mention that they all belong to the uh, same package router and then golang is smart enough to understand that if they belong to the same folder and the name of the package is the same then that means that all the files belong to the same model or module and then you can easily import them into your main.go file okay so package router is where we can <clears throat> begin the entire journey so uh, a lot of people like starting, uh, they like to start from the models, then the middleware, then the routers. I sometimes go from routers, middleware, and models, or I sometimes go reverse, it doesn't matter. Here, I'm just going to mix around a little bit, okay? People get confused, they think, oh, if I if you've not made the model of, uh, of, of the file, how can you just create the routes, or how if you've made the routes, how can you just not create the controllers? They get really confused. Guys, it doesn't matter, really. Um, it's just, uh, you know, don't, 
don't don't treat a video like you know if you've seen just two minutes of it if you understand it that's it uh, just go ahead uh, if you're not understanding the two minutes watch till 10 minutes and then when you look back you'll under start understanding everything right because uh, it's not possible to make it uh, very understandable every single minute right when you watch till 10 15 minutes and then you look back and then you, you'll be able to connect the dots you'll be able to understand everything all right so this will be package outers and obviously we'll have import we'll have we'll be importing some things and this is usually the golang structure of a file you have uh, you write the name of the package right import and you write the function so the function that will be there in this file will be your function router and this is basically of type mux dot router okay so the return type from this function is mux dot router now mux is not something that we have imported here so let's let's do that so we'll say github.com slash gorilla slash mux now somebody coming from a, a javascript background will be very confused by seeing something like this github.com blah 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 whatever it's because uh, like you have now this is something that the js guys just don't understand is that is that npm uh, you know is a package manager but it's also a website it's also a place or a repository or a platform where people are sharing their uh, npm packages there right so you can easily import things from npm but in the case of golang nothing like an npm exists so everything is on github so all the packages are there on github for everybody to see and this is why uh, when you want to import something you say something like this github.com golamux but then it gives you a squiggly line because it says that obviously you don't have this package right now so what you'll have to do is you'll have to uh, import it you'll have to say go get Right, because you're using Go module, so you can say Go get, or you can say Go mod tidy at the end, and then it'll import all the packages that you've imported, but not imported, imported. Right, you, you've referenced them, but not imported them yet. Okay. <clears throat> so um, here we'll create a variable called router, and it's of type mux dot new router. Now, new router is a function that you get access to inside mux. Let's create create a new router for you, and you can capture that in a variable called router. And here you'll create your handle functions. So you'll have your handle func, and I'll need multiple ones because obviously we'll have get, post, update, delete, all of those. So I'll have about five different ones I'm planning right now. So I'll have handle func. And so let me just copy and paste this. Okay, so the basic structure is ready. Now, now it all comes down to how do I want to um, manage those routes, those routes. So what I want to say is I want to say that the base will be API slash. And since we are going to be working with the stocks database, there will be ID. Okay. Now this is get by ID. So here um, in this function, we'll put a comma and we'll say, now middleware is something that we have to work on at the moment, but we'll say middleware dot get stock. Okay. And here you'll say methods get comma options. Okay, so get method. And when somebody hits this route, just call this function called get stock, which is in the middleware, which we have to work on. Okay. <clears throat> and here we'll have our uh, get all stocks. So we'll say API slash stock. And you put a comma here, you'll say middleware dot get all stock. So these get stock, get all stock, these will be functions that we'll be creating very soon. Methods. We have get comma options. And out here you'll have API slash new stock. That's to create a new new stock. So we'll say middleware dot create stock. Nice. Okay, so automatically, uh, so I'm using these extensions which are able to automatically uh, suggest auto completions for me. And uh, when you go to um, the extensions tab, it's it's here somewhere. The extensions tab, you'll uh, if you write Golang, the first three extensions just 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 like install them. Uh, they help you to format your code. They help you with these auto completions and all. Slash 
stock slash id and this will be for uh, put so let's say middleware dot update stock dot methods so put method comma options and then there's only one remaining which is delete so we'll say delete stock slash id comma middleware delete stock delete options awesome so it was able to complete this for me all right this is brilliant so what we'll do is we'll save this file and obviously we're aware of all these squiggly lines because obviously we don't have uh, middleware right now but we can import the middleware to import the middleware what you'll have to do is you'll have to copy and paste the name of your file uh, of your main project go.mod and you'll write it here and you'll say slash middleware which is basically your middleware now um, we'll create a file called handlers.co this will obviously belong to the package middleware And in their models, you'll have a file called models.go. In your main.go file, you'll have a package main. And a couple of things that you'll import. Uh, now, this these extensions are a double-edged sword in the sense they help you work, but they also kind of uh, you know create problems in the sense. I know that I'll be using some packages like FMT and log and net slash HTTP packages, but if I try to write them here and if I press Control S, they will disappear. In the sense, Golang, uh, this this extension won't let me import a package that I'm not using at the moment. So, so they're like a double-edged sword, but so if you get used to it, func main router dot router. Uh, guys, by the way, if you're planning, if you're if you're preparing for competitive programming or if you're preparing for an interview uh, at, at a very serious engineering company, I recommend to not use extensions because you get overly dependent on them. And when you go into your interview, uh, the interviewer is, is uh, expecting you to not use your favorite uh, code editor, right? Because you'll mostly be on a uh, on a VC call or a video call, and you will have access only to their uh, code editor that's built in into their software into their uh, browser uh, web browser software so there you won't get access to vs code and you won't get access to these extensions and you'll be in deep trouble and this has happened with a lot of uh, the developers that i mentor so i strongly recommend that you only use extensions uh, only if when you know what you're doing or or you, you know probably not planning to go for some extreme uh, or like very difficult engineering positions okay starting server on the port 8080 so we'll have 8080 port and we'll say log.fatal http dot listen and serve you want to pass r here which is basically your router dot router now I'll be using the FMT package, I'll be using the log package, and I'll be using the HTTP, init slash HTTP package. And then I need access to my router. As you've seen, that router here is the package. If it's a small r, that router is a package and router is a function. So if you go here, you'll see router is a function that we're accessing. So I'll copy and paste this part here. And then I'll say slash router. So in my main.go file, I was very easily able to import my router. Okay. The only thing that's missing here is that it needs to be port 8080. And we'll be passing R. Control S. All right. So now you'll head back to your uh, models. So let's head to our models. So models is basically the um, how the data is going to be represented in our table. So I've already shown you that we have created a table in Postgres. Um, 
uh, Golang has to work with the database and also has to work with JSON, which we will be sending uh, from Postman. And uh, now this is again one thing that JavaScript developers are not able to understand is that, uh, you know, because it's JavaScript, it understands JSON, because which is JavaScript object notation. But other languages like Golang don't have support for uh, JSON. So you have to, or they don't understand it automatically. So that you have to use encoding and decoding to work with JSON. So here we'll have package models. And we'll have something called a stock, which is a struct. It has a stock ID. And I'll call it stock ID. Then you have name, you have price. You'll have to close this here. So we're using these backticks, and we're also showing um, Golang that in JSON it's going to look like this stock ID. Whereas for Golang's own purposes, it's going to look like this stock ID with the capital S and capital ID. Okay. And name will be string, it will be JSON name, price will be int. 64 price and then you'll have company company can't be in 64 obviously it'll be string and json company and close the back tick when i save it uh, the extension obviously formats everything for me so what's important here is to understand that uh, name with the capital n price with the capital p company with the capital c are for golang to understand whereas in json it will be represented as name price company. So when you make a request from post uh, Postman or, or your curl or whatever to this API, it's going to look like this. This is the data that you need to send when you want to create a new stock or update the stock. Okay. Now we can head over to our handlers. And handlers is the file where we'll have to do uh, a lot of work because uh, our router is waiting for all these functions. Right? It's waiting for get stock, get all stock, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so and how do we get this? We'll get them through our handlers. So let's uh, start working here. We're going to import a few things. And um, like I said, you know, I can't just start writing that. I know I'll be needing some packages. I can't start writing a name because the extensions then they uh, make those um, packages disappear. Firstly, what I'll define is my response. So the beauty with Golang is that you can define your own structs. Structs are basically your own data type. Like for example, uh, you have in 64 that Golang understands, you have string that Golang understands. And then you can write things like ID and message, telling Golang that, hey, ID is going to be int and message is going to be string. And then you can also mention something in the JSON side of things saying in JSON is going to look like ID, comma, omit empty. And string is going to be message. Comma, commit empty. Now here we've defined our own response. Okay, and with the help of struct, you're, you're telling Golang that, hey, you understand int, you understand string, but here's a struct, that's a data type that I want to create, which is called response, but it's basically comprised of things that you already understand, but I'm just collecting them together and making a new data type called response, which is basically struct is the way to do it. And whenever we send responses from these functions, uh, we're going to have to, we're, we're going to have it in, this, in the structure of a response and the structure of response we have already defined. And this is the beauty with Golang that you can you know, define proper structures. Uh, the first function that we'll be working with will be the create connection function. And this is going to return back sql.up. So what is SQL? SQL is database slash SQL. Now, usually when I'm going through, uh, when I'm importing a package or, or working with a package like database slash SQL, I always have documentation open with me. So if it's okay with you and if uh, you know you want to get in the habit of working with uh, packages you'll have to uh, like go through a lot of documentation and understand things so open up the go go documentation for this and then <coughs> try to go through it try to understand what we're doing 
firstly, what we'll do in this function is we'll say go dot environment. We'll have a go dot environment, and we'll load our environment uh, file. Okay, so we'll we also need to have an environment file. So we'll say dot env, and I'd already already shown you what the uh, file is going to look like. So I'm just going to copy and paste that string out here. This is what it's going to look like. So you'll have username, password, localhost, which is the whichever host it is, port, uh, name of the database, and Postgres. That's the URL that you need. Now go.env is not a uh, you know built-in module. It's it's a package that we'll have to import as a third party. So we'll say um, github.com. And you'll say slash joho slash go dot n. Okay. And you'll come here, you'll say if and this is again another thing with Golang that you want to handle the errors whenever they appear or whenever they can happen. And that makes it very easy for us to track down errors. So here you'll say log dot fatal error loading dot n. So now when debugging, you don't have to go through the entire file or all the files to understand where the error is getting uh, generated from. You know exactly which line because that's the error that it was having issue loading .env file. And then you have your functions. So like I said, you, know, you have to have your SQL documentation open. And there's a function called open, which just basically opens up your connection. So you'd say Postgres, comma os dot get environment and postgres url postgres url is something that we only have declared postgres url this is what we need okay you're going to be capturing that in a variable called db and you'll also you might also encounter an error so if you encounter an error what you want to do is you want to say if error is not equal to null panic error and you want to check the connection then you want to say db.ping ping basically checks the connection if everything is working fine but there could be an error out here as well so you want to again handle the error so if error is not equal to nil you'll panic and send out the error but if everything works fine you'll say fmt.print ln and you'll say successfully connected to postgres and you return db when you return db which is your connection uh, you know connection to the postgres it's going to basically be sql.db which is again uh, available to you in sql module so you save this and the help uh, that you get with functions uh, with those extensions is that it automatically also imports fmt login os for you all right but uh, i had just mentioned about go.env i don't know why that uh, suddenly disappeared let me get it back again actually so i'll say again github.com slash joho slash go.env i hope Wow, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's wrong. Anyhow, now the next functions that we want to work on are all these functions, five functions, right? So these five functions that we'll have to work on right now. Okay, so we are in our handlers file, okay? And we have to build all these functions quickly. Get stock, get all stock, create stock, etc. So let's start writing that. So we'll say func create Talk. and then you'll have your get stock so we'll say func get stock and then you'll have your get all stock so we'll say func get all stock 
you have update stock so funk update stock so guys in in case um, you're worried about typos and all just make sure you have your main.go file open on a different screen or on a on a different uh, you know tab or whatever so that you can so your router.go file so that you can compare at least if the name of the functions is correct otherwise you'll be in trouble and then you have delete stock so you say pump delete stock all right so let's start with the create stock function so here what we'll say is that create stock is having w comma r now your history package has a response and a request okay you need a reference or a pointer to the request because request is something that you receive from postman or from the user the request is received right response is something that you come up with you, you create that response to send out and here let's create a variable called stock which is of type model stock stock models being your models package stock being your stock stock so create a stock variable which is of type models stock stock the first thing that you want to do is uh, we know that the data that's going to come into this api is going to be in json format so like i like i told you that json is something that golang doesn't understand so you want to decode it so you'll say json json is a package that you get here with golang it's a new decode decoder r dot body you need a reference I, like i said to the request because using r you can access the body that you're getting into this function and you'll decode it into stock so whatever the data, the data, the data that you're getting from the postman uh, in json you want to decode it based on the stock stock being the variable that we've created models of stock okay so what we'll do here is we'll say uh encoding slash json okay uh, as soon as i saved you can see that that thing went away right uh, the go.end package we'll do something about it i don't know why it's going away okay so uh models dot stock it was able to also import models for me so that is perfect okay so now what we'll do is we'll handle the error that might come while decoding so let's capture the error here and handle the error out here if error is not equal to nil you want to say log dot fail unable to decode the request body percentage v comma error you want to print out the error then you want to have a variable called insert id and we'll call a fun function called insert stock and we'll pass the stock there so after decoding it we'll get the value in our stock variable only because we'll decode it based on stock we'll get the stock variable only and we'll pass that stock variable which is actually a struct now to insert stock function and we'll get back the inserted id of it and what you want to return from here is a response a response based on the response struct that we have created so the response that we'll send back from here will be response id will be insert id comma message will be stock created successfully comma and out here you'll say now you again know that when we worked with golang the uh, format is not in json so you want to, when you send a response you want to encode it into json and that's when you want to send it so you'll say new encoder you want to encode the response which is w and you want to say encode res which is your response object perfect now this means that you need to have a function called insert stock right so we'll think about it in a minute that will be the function that will talk to our database we'll work with the database okay so these are handler functions and then we'll have some database level functions as well in a while so before that let's worry about our get stock so let's have w http dot response writer and r will be 
request HTTP request, just like we did in create. You can get access to the params using mux. Right, so all the parameters that come in in the request, you can easily access them using the mux package. And you want to uh, convert the string, so you can say string convert dot ATOI, say params ID. And you want to capture that in a variable called ID so that you're able to work with the ID properly. Okay. And here you will say if error is not equal to nil. Log dot fatal f unable to convert the string into int. Because obviously when you send in JSON, it's always a string. But you need int to be able to work with the database level. Here you will say percentage v comma error. Then you'll call a function called get stock. And you want to convert the ID that you have here, which is an int, but you want to convert that into int64. And you want to send it to a function called get stock that we'll have to work on in a minute. So it's so you, you're seeing a pattern here. What's happening here is that you have a handle level function, and then they're calling a database level function. They insert stock get stock, right? And so we'll have to create these functions as well. Let's handle the error out here. So we'll say if error is not equal to nil, log dot fail f. I'm able to get stock percentage v comma error. And you want to encode the response. In W because W is the response, R is the request, and you send that as a response. So here also the most uh, the, the real problem is getting created by get stock, and obviously mux is something that you'll have to import. So let's import mux out here on top. So you'll say github.com slash gorilla slash mux. Now comes the get all stock, which is basically uh, not having, you not you don't have to pass an ID in the params, you just get all the stocks. And here again, we'll have W comma R. W will be response writer, R will be uh, request. And you'll have uh, get all stocks. So we'll have to create a new function called get all stocks. So like the same pattern we are following where we have a handle level function and then that ends up calling a deeper function that works with the database. Stocks, comma, error. If error is not equal to nil, so log dot fatal f, unable to get All the stocks percentage v comma error and lastly you want to um, send out the response by encoding it into JSON then comes your update stock function again w comma r w is response writer and r is request and uh, just like we had with get stock by ID, you obviously need the params, which is the ID. So let's say params dot, uh, sorry, params is equal to mux dot vars, and we'll pass the request there so that you get all the params, access to all the params. And now using the params, params uh, could be multiple, right? Inside that, what we need is the, we need access to the ID params. 
and you want to pass it through the string convert function to convert this into int and the int you want to capture in this variable called id and you also want to handle the error so by handling the error you say log dot page left you'll say unable to convert the string into int percentage v comma error and we'll create a variable called stop this will be of type model start stock where s is capital because when you're working with models the stock is a struct right and it's capital s so you'll have to say models name of the package with and the name of the struct and this is the name of the variable stock and we need this to be able to decode what's coming in as in the body so you'll say error equal to json dot new decoder body dot decode and percent stock so with whatever is coming in the body, you want to decode it based on stock and you'll get access to that in the stock variable. And here you also handle the error. So error is not equal to nil. You'll say log dot fail left. Unable to decode the request body stage v comma error. Now, most importantly, just like we did with all the other functions, we have going to have a database. We're going to have a function that's going to work talk to the database, which is basically update stock and it's going to take ID, but convert it into N64 first. And we'll also pass the body, the new body that we received. So to update, you need the ID, you need the new body. So both we're passing here. Okay. And you want to capture that in a variable called updated rows. What you want to do is you want to Create a message saying fmt dot sprintf say stock updated successfully total rows slash records affected updated rows so all the rows that have been affected we have printed them out. So if you remember that response had an ID and a message, this is why we created the message and now we'll have to create a response. So we'll say response is equal to, based on the response struct, we have an ID, n64 ID, comma, message, and uh, he'll want to be able to encode this response, this RES object. So you'll say json dot new encoder body dot uh, not body sorry w dot encode and response. Okay. <sighs> That's that. Now let's worry about our delete stock function. Again, we'll have w comma r. w is response. r is request. To delete, you obviously need the id. So what I'll do is I'll say params is equal to mark stock vars r. And we'll need to convert that into integer. And we'll use a string convert package. To convert that, we'll handle the error as well. Convert string to int. And again, the same pattern is going to be followed. We'll be using a function that will work at the database level convert that ID into N64 
and we'll capture that in a variable called Let's so we'll say fmp dot sprintf stocks uh, deleted successfully. Total rows affected percentage v comma deleted rows. And now comes the time to create your response object. So it's a response. ID is int64 ID comma message. Oh, sorry, message is msg comma. And here you'll say JSON dot new encoder w dot encode res perfect here it should be encoder so now we are uh, left with these functions insert stock get stock get all stocks update stock and delete stock. So at least let's create the basic definition of these functions. So we'll say insert stock, okay. And as you can see, insert stock is just returning an integer. Sorry, insert stock. Just returning an integer, which is insert ID, okay. And get stock will be there okay it accepts integer which is id but you done something else similarly you have get all stocks so you say punk get all stocks and then you have your update stock so you say punk update stock so also returns the id of the stock updated it takes the id but also takes stock which is like model stock stock and you have delete stock which takes in just the id and returns how many number of uh, rows have been affected so similarly with update stock it returns the number of rows affected okay and uh, with get all stocks get all stocks you get a list of all the stocks right so it will be a slice of type models dot stock and you might get an error also it doesn't take in anything with get stock you send an id but you get back a model or maybe an error sometimes. With insert stock, you send it a stock. So of type models dot stock, but you get back the ID of the stock. So now we have to start working inside these functions. So we are clear that insert stock is going to have some code and logic that's going to basically be working with our database. Okay. So let's create a variable called DB. And it's going to call the create connection function. Create connection being the function that's out here on top, this one. So, uh, what we'll now do actually, create connection, I can see a small issue. Create connection has to be a small c. And out here, back in your insert stock you're going to say uh, create connection okay and you want to defer defer basically means that you want this function to run at the end you want to close the connection at the end and um, we'll have a sql statement like insert into stocks name Price company value 
values and give reference dollar one dollar two dollar three returning stock ID and you want to uh, give this the name of SQL statement and let's create a variable called ID which is of type n64 and now all we have to do is we have to use DB and we have to use the query row function and just pass our query that we have created the entire query right so we'll say SQL statement and we'll pass our stock name as soon as we pass our stock name uh, query row is able to understand that you know this dollar one is basically going to be stock name which will be stored in name and dollar two is going to be stock dot price which is going to be stored in price and similarly for stock dot company as well dot scan ampersand id and we'll save error not equal to nil log dot fatal f unable to execute the query percentage v comma error and fmt dot printf inserted a single record comma id and we will return id out here you want to obviously have this error that's getting handled out here so that's your insert stock function now for your get stock function we'll say we'll create another variable db which is again create connection and again we'll say defer db.close close connection at the end right so whenever this function is going to end uh, processing that's where you want to call db.close create a variable called stock type models or stock and again we'll create another sql statement here it will be select all so for that you say select star from stocks where stock id is equal to dollar one now uh, if you have done the gorm series with me the postgres gorm series you know that you don't have to write actually write these sql statements that much right it takes uh, a lot of takes care of a lot of things on its own a lot of people like that because it has a lot of abstraction but a lot of people like actually writing sql statements but they don't like to like a lot of abstraction so i've shown you both the ways feel free to use any that you want out of these so just like we took the query row variable there here we're taking the row variable it's going to have query row and sql statement comma id And we'll say row dot scan percent stock dot name comma ampersand stock dot price comma ampersand stock dot company. Okay. So it's going to get us ID name price company for uh, like stock with that particular ID and uh, this might lead to an error so we want to switch case between errors so it's a switch error if the case is SQL dot no rows you want to say 
more rows were done. And you want to just return stock common L. But if the case is nil, you want to return stock common L. And in the default case, you want to say log dot fatal F. Unable to scan the row. And at the end, you'll return stock in error. If everything went well, there were no errors, then you'll just return stock directly. So the next function is get all stocks. Then we have our update stock, and then we have our delete stock. So for get all stocks, what you want to do is you want to again create, uh, actually the first two lines are going to be common. Let's take the first three lines actually. So let's copy and paste them. Only here, you want to have multiple stocks because you'll return all the stocks, right? So it will be a slice of type models.stock. And you'll again have your SQL statement. So let's copy and paste that as well. So here you'll have select start from stocks period and that's all you want. And you want to have DB query, so you'll copy and paste that here. But here you'll just say in your db.query, instead of query row, you'll just say db.query, and you just will pass your SQL statement. And um, here we can also capture an error and handle the error. So if error not equal to nil, say log dot fatal f unable to execute the query percentage v comma error and at the end here you'll say defer rows dot close for rows dot next You want to create a variable called stock. So type models of stock. And you want to now scan. And uh, basically what we're doing is all the rows, we're just processing them properly, packaging them properly, and then appending all of that into our stocks variable. And we'll just repeat uh, return this. So one by one, all of them, we just want to process them properly and then we just want to append them to our stocks and then we just want to uh, send them okay so here's what you'll say is you'll say rows dot scan ampersand stock dot stock id comma ampersand stock dot name comma ampersand stock dot price comma ampersand stock dot company okay and you'll handle the error. So if error not equal to nil, you would say log dot fatal f unable to scan the row percentage v comma error. And here you'll have stocks is equal to append. And the stocks you'll have to append stock. And from here, we'll return stocks, comma, errors. And this function now will return all the stocks, right? It's just getting all, all stocks on the database, processing them, appending them to the stocks, which is a slice of type model the stock, and just sending that back. Okay, and for update stock, now update stock is going to be slightly long as a function, but the first uh, two lines are obviously going to be the same. So you'll copy and paste this. 
and you'll copy and paste this as well a SQL statement but it will obviously change so instead of selecting it will update stocks and set name is equal to the second value that is there price is equal to the third value that's there and company is equal to the fourth where stock id is equal to dollar one okay and you want to say db dot exec pass sql statement id stock dot name stock dot price and stock dot company all right so in your db dot exec uh, method you're going to be sending the sql statement basically along with the second item which is name price company and the first item is stock id which will be price so based on that id you want to update the values want to handle the error that you might have received here so if error is not equal to nil you'll say unable to execute the query and you want to now return the rows affected so you'll say rows affected comma error Rows affected, and here we will say error is not equal to nil again. Field F error while checking the affected rows. So, as you can see, this uh, code that we've written, written is quite solid because every single time we are just handling every single type of error, so we're not leaving any room for problems to happen total rows records affected rows affected and we return the rows affected so in two uh, places only we are doing the rows affected which has update stock and the other is delete stock okay for delete stock again the first three statements we can copy from here Okay, and now we just have to change this statement here. So we'll say delete from stocks where stock ID is dollar one. And again, you want to say db dot execute the SQL statement. Actually. Uh, copy the whole thing from here to here. Okay, and copy this error also. So you're able to um, execute the SQL statement for that ID, right? And SQL statement basically is deleting. And then you'll handle the error in case this query is not able to execute. Rows affected, again, you can copy and paste this part until here, actually until here. This whole part can be copied and pasted here. And that completes our delete stock function. So here you're able to also, uh, after deleting, there's not much to do, right? So that's why we just had to find out the number of affected rows and we just copied the same logic from our update stock. Now we'll just uh, do a few quick checks in the code. So mostly we are having issue with the Gorilla Mux. So we'll go back and we'll say um, go mod tidy and it'll find all these packages for us. So some of the issues that we are having, let's fix them. Router.go is showing me a 
problem here is because I have not returned router from this function. Obviously, I'm supposed to return a router. In handlers, okay, go dot should be go dot env. And uh, again, <laughs> let me get that package again. So I'll say github.com slash joho slash, oops, sorry, slash go dot env. Now, hopefully, it shouldn't give me an issue. Yeah. And here, so this is a problem with the auto correct or auto complete because I'm pretty sure that uh, I never said uh, parse it, I always said ATOI. Okay. So now the only issue I think seems to be because we don't have the go.env package and let me get that again. So let's go one tight again, gets me the go.env package. It'll obviously take a while to find it. And now let me go back and see that, yeah, we can't see any issues now. So we're in our postman now, we want to test out the project and I'm running the server uh, on my terminal and I have this collection ready in Postman. So I'll open up add stock. Now guys, um, if you have coded along with me and if you're facing any issues, please check out the code on GitHub because I'll be leaving this code on GitHub. So if there's, uh, because usually when I shoot the video, right, when I was shooting it in between today, when I'm testing it and I'm, you know, uh, I had I had made a lot of fixes that day, and today I'm testing it. I'm just uh, you know packaging the video, editing it, and posting it on YouTube. So I I do a lot of fixes sometimes, uh, and I forget to probably film them or whatever. So if 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 in case it's happened with this video in the sense uh, you know something is not working, please pick up the code from GitHub and then compare. Sometimes what happens is that you also end up making some mistakes even when coding along, and it's like a comma misplaced comma here and there or something. So before you panic, before you know you feel that something is not working, please compare every single line of the code with my code that I'll be posting on GitHub. I'll be giving you the link in the description box. And then everything will work, don't worry. So here we're creating a new stock. Now name is basically the ticker, ticker name or ticker price, or ticker name, sorry, of the stock and price is 21, company is Facebook. Let's do that. So stock created successfully. Let's create for Tesla at 35, name of the company is Tesla. Okay, so let's get all. To get all, it's obviously 880 slash API slash stock. You can get all the stocks here, okay. Get by ID, let's get the one with ID three. So you get it, it's Facebook 21, company is Facebook. Update, update the one with company with three. So stock update successfully, total rows records affected is one. And now let's get all to see if it's, yeah, it's successfully changed. And now let's delete it. So let's delete the one with three. Okay, so third one is deleted. Now if you get all here, you won't be able to find three. So one, you can find, you can sign four, but you can't find three because we've deleted it. Okay, so everything works perfectly fine. Okay, check out the code on GitHub. If you've coded long and things are not working, uh, must be a you know typo somewhere, or could be a missed comma somewhere. And if still you feel some issues are there, put it in the comments below, I'll help you out. And uh, if there's a bigger issues that, that, you're for, uh, that you're facing, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. I, I usually reply fairly really quickly on LinkedIn. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video. And obviously do subscribe to this channel because you get awesome content like this, right?